all swelling in the knee is not the same. There are three types of swelling that occur in the knee and we're gonna cover each of them as well as some of the strategies to treat each one. Welcome to Apex by Hema 2.0. My name is Dr. Chris Rayner and my goal today is to educate you about the cause of this condition, when to do something about it and what to do to restore as much function as possible to your knee. Generally, the swelling in your knee is the result of one of the following, effusion in the joint, fluid that shouldn't be there that is inside of the joint capsule, soft tissue swelling, fluid that is not inside the capsule but around the knee due to increased blood flow to the muscles and soft tissues on the outside of the joint capsule, apparent swelling. Patients think that the knee is swollen but is not. It just looks swollen because of muscle atrophy in the muscles around the knee. An effusion is intraarticular pathology, meaning within a joint contrasting periarticular around the joint and extraarticular outside of the joint. This pathology indicates that something is wrong inside the knee or joint capsule with the meniscus, cartilage or ligaments causing the synovium to produce extra fluid. The synovium is connective tissue that lines the inside of the joint capsule that produces a thick liquid called synovial fluid that lubricates the movement of the joint. When something inside the joint capsule is damaged, extra fluid is produced, which can contribute to the lack of mobility that may result. Thus, after an injury or a surgery when the knee has experienced an insult, effusion is a normal occurrence. In an arthroscopy, we actually run fluid through the knee exacerbating this effect. This is nothing to worry about and it will gradually decrease over time as long as you do not continue to aggravate the knee. This type of swelling will respond to relative rest for a short period, elevation, ice, small amounts of compression, and if needed, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs such as ibuprofen, Celebrex, naproxen, etc. Up next, we have soft tissue swelling, which occurs outside of the knee joint capsule in the muscles and connective tissue, typically affecting the quadriceps, especially the vastus medialis obliquus or VMO, the muscles of the pes anserinus, sartorius, gracilis, and the semitendinosus, the gastrosoleus complex, and the bursal tissue around the knee. In the early stages, this type of swelling is associated with inflammation caused by injury or surgery. As the condition evolves, it becomes more of a fluid management problem in the lymphatic vasculature outside of the joint. Not to be confused with effusion, which we already mentioned occurs inside the joint. The lymphatic system is a network of vessels, nodes, and ducts that circulates fluid through the connective tissue of the body. The popliteal lymph nodes include six or seven nodes and are located in the legs behind the knees in the popliteal fossa. They service the lower legs and the feet for the lymphatic system. This system is thrown out of balance after the knee has suffered some form of injury or surgery. Let's talk about why. The heart is a high pressure pump that pumps blood down to your lower extremities through the arteries. The veins are a low pressure system that rely on the sequential contraction and relaxation of the muscles, that is to say the muscular pump, to pump fluid back up to the heart. Because obviously there is no heart in your lower extremities to mobilize the fluid. So as you move about throughout the day, your muscles help your veins circulate blood through your body. The lymphatic system relies on the same muscular pump mechanism to circulate fluid throughout the body. If during the post-operative period or follow an injury, you lack full knee extension, and by this I mean knee extension that is symmetrical to the other leg with a small amount of hyperextension, or you walk with a little bit of a limp, then you will have a non-symmetrical gait and the balance between the muscular pump in the injured leg versus the non-injured leg will be thrown out of balance. The muscular pump in the injured leg won't be working with the efficiency that it should and venous return to the heart and the drainage of lymph fluid on that side will be slowed. The result is excess blood in the venous system of that lower extremity and consequently excess lymphatic fluid in the tissue surrounding the knee. This is why knee extension is so freaking important. I want to emphasize that healthy knees actually have a slight amount of hyperextension beyond 180 degrees and full knee extension means both knees must have the same amount of hyperextension if measured. 
While most people have between two to five degrees of hyperextension, whatever amount of hyperextension that you have on your uninjured side is what is normal for you, even if it is more than five degrees. Soft tissue swelling that is outside of the knee will respond to restoration of full knee extension, full range of motion of the knee, a normal gait pattern, and elevation. Be warned, this problem can persist for a long time if you don't address the root of the problem. With this problem, you may observe that your legs appear relatively similar in the morning, but as you move throughout the day, the fluid in the effective leg builds up with subsequent swelling of your knee on that side. There are several protocols I suggest in order to regain full range of motion. This passive method involves two chairs and a bag of rice. Place the two chairs wide enough apart that you can sit on one and place your heel on the other. Place the bag of rice on your shin just below your knee. We use a bag of rice as it is easily shapeable to your leg and weighs approximately 20 pounds. Let the bag of rice rest on your shin for approximately 20 minutes twice daily. Put the rice on the thigh if the shin causes too much pressure at the knee. Cushion the heel with a towel if you're experiencing discomfort there. Remember, stiffness after injury or surgery is common and discomfort is to be expected while regaining full knee flexion. On a scale of zero to 10, with zero being no pain whatsoever and 10 being the worst pain imaginable, you may experience discomfort in the range of six to seven when you are working on this. Small tears. <laughs> It's uncomfortable enough that you need to breathe deeply through it. Active therapy methods, namely maneuvers where you are doing exercises, that is to say moving your own body, in order to obtain the full knee extensions include prone knee extensions. Here you need a table with a firm edge that you can lay on. Beds are too soft for this exercise. Using the non-operative leg to push the other leg towards the floor with your knees at the edge of the table. Apply firm pressure with the uninjured side down on the heel of the injured knee and try to hold it for between one to two minutes. At the beginning, you may only be able to hold this for approximately 15 seconds, but over time, you should work yourself up to approximately 60 minutes at a time. Adjust the position of the toes on the non-injured side in order to get more or less extension as needed. The details do matter. Theraband passive extensions or walkouts with a goal of one to two minutes. You will feel tension on the back of your leg as the band pulls your leg into full extension. Twice a day for two to three reps, one to two minutes with a few minutes rest in between. When finished, you can exit this move by slowly walking forward with the uninjured knee to slowly reduce the tension on your injured side. Carefully slide your injured foot forward as you decrease the tension on the band. Theraband active extensions. Turn around so that the band is pulling your leg forward. Squeeze and contract your quadricep tightly to extend your knee fully backwards. This develops quadricep strength and contractility after knee surgery. Here you can do static holds for time, say 30 to 60 seconds, or you can do repetitions, three sets of 10, twice a day. Again, to exit this move, slowly walk forward with your uninjured side to reduce the tension on the cable and slide your injured leg forward. And finally, apparent swelling is the final type that we are going to cover today. Anytime you injure your knee, there's going to be some amount of atrophy or muscle loss on the operated or injured side. And when you look at your normal leg, it may appear larger than the operated or injured leg with a bigger quad and small patella. The operated or injured side may have a small quad and a small patella. The patella is a bony structure which will not change in size, but the difference is the circumference around the muscular area. So the operative or injured side appears to have a swollen knee. The patella seems large in relation to the atrophied quad muscle. You're used to seeing a big quad, small patella as you do in the normal leg. The contrast between the legs is jarring. This type of swelling, though it actually isn't swelling, will respond to restoration of the muscle bulk. In particular, the VMO aspect of the quadricep muscle. Some active recommendations to restore normal muscular proportions are side step ups or side step downs with a VMO focus, multi-directional single leg balance or a shrimp squat or assisted shrimp. Overall, swelling that occurs without fever or redness is not particularly worrisome. If you notice swelling, begin by working to achieve full knee extension, a normal gait pattern and good quadricep activation. 
If you have achieved those three things and there is still swelling, then come talk to me. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, and teach one.